Hello, welcome back to the garden. It's been a little while since I brought you along actually, um, but while um, I haven't been filming much, I have been doing loads in the garden. And in my last video, if you watched it towards the end, I mentioned that there was a new area of the garden that we have cleared and set up ready to grow. So in today's video, I wanted to show you that area and what I've been up to. Um, and then at the very end of the video, I will show you what's going on in the woodland garden, right at the very back at the end of the garden, because quite a few of you have been asking about that. And I haven't actually updated you since February. We're starting the video here in the polytunnel and that is just because I am giving my strawberry plants a soak. I find um, having them in the pots is really great but I need to make sure I'm on top of giving them a water and I wasn't planning on keeping these uh, strawberry plants in these terracotta pots but actually I quite like them so what I've been doing is just making sure about once a week I give them a really good soak um, I do give them a quick water when I'm up here watering everything else um, but I find if I give them a really good soak like this the terracotta gets completely saturated um, and they can just have a really good soak. Um, while I'm in here though really pleased with how it's looking I've got my salad my spinach hasn't bolted yet and I'm still getting daily pickings off that and the um, peas right at the bottom they're doing well also another thing is i've got a peach and an apricot tree right at the back uh, the peach is a slightly larger one i've decided that i'm going to be planting that just behind my peas and i'm going to fan it out along the back of my polytunnel there um, so that's another thing that i'll be getting on with maybe over the next month or so or possibly i'll wait till the autumn to plant it as it's a bit hot however it is in a really tiny pot so I do need to do something with it um, also I did go and buy some more strawberry plants actually so the other day I was up um, at the garden centre and I saw a rubian one pot it was three for a fiver so I picked up a rubian the rubian is a uh, really long lasting one so it fruits from kind of June all the way into October and it's got a pink or dark crimson coloured flower. I also picked up a Montana and another one which I can't remember. Um, but yeah, hopefully they're going to do well and then I'll be able to um, make some new plants off those when uh, they, they start sending out their runners later in the year. Anyway, that is enough of the polytunnel. It is so hot in here. You're actually stood outside in the shade because my camera can't take it in here and nor can I. So let's go outside and have a look at what I've been up to. I'm really excited to share this with you. So welcome to the newest cultivated area in my garden. I am so pleased to be sharing this with you. Um, but not only um, is this a new area that I can grow in, I've also got another area that I've been working on, which is just behind. You probably can't see very well, so I'll be taking you over to that area in a minute, but I am so pleased that I've got this area sorted. Now, back in the autumn last year, I decided that I would make use of this area. Um, it was completely overgrown with um, ferns and weeds. You can see I've got a um, kind of wild, uh, corridor just along here that takes us back to the wild garlic behind this whole area looked like that but I had um, just here was a tree I can't remember what tree it was it was growing all over the place behind it we had an hazel tree that was kind of just taking up loads of space in this area and I am so pleased that over the last kind of couple of weeks or month or so I've been slowly working on this area and transforming it transforming it into what it is today. Now, when I originally thought of this garden um, or this area, all I was going to do was just kind of have a bed going along the side of the polytunnel. If you're familiar with my channel, you probably saw over um, you know, the winter, I would put hedge trimmings down, grass clippings and all bits and pieces along here. Um, so you can probably see in the picture um, that it's really twiggy um, and things like that. Then I kept getting some pigs getting into the garden and they turned it all over and brought it all down here and made a right mess. Um, so when I started in the spring here, I just thought, oh, it's quite, you know, like a depressing area really, because I was hoping that it would all be quite neat and I could chuck my potatoes in this and they would grow really well. Um, but in a way, I'm really glad that I didn't do that because uh, we just thought, well, 
this whole area needs to be sorted out and it's quite a nice area so really why do i only want you know a six by say one meter bed all the way along here so uh what me and my friend calf did was actually uh weed this entire area and rather than having just a one meter bed here i've actually got a bed now that is more like say i don't know I'm no, I'm no good with measurements but i have a bed that i can grow potatoes in this year all the way along here but 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 amazingly i've actually created an area along the side here that i have put my black currant plants in all of these black currants along here were black currants that i took cuttings from down at my allotment so i did a video actually maybe a year a year or two years ago uh, where i showed you how to take current cuttings and then ever since that video i've had hundreds of people asking me well probably not hundreds but i've had loads of people asking me how the currants did um once i'd taken cuttings from them and essentially those cuttings went into small pots the ones that took then went in slightly bigger pots and then they were just down on the patio ever since so this week i'm so excited because i have actually got them in their final growing positions so rather than cultivating all of the area down to the drainage ditch we decided to kind of work with nature a little bit we already had a tree trunk that had fallen here or had been placed here at some stage which is nearly rotten so we kind of decided to use that as a natural barrier um, but to leave a really lovely uh, corridor along here for wildlife and in here I've got um, an ornamental nettle I don't know the name of it I've got some ferns we've got wild garlic and we've got herb robert all of which I can see now I've got wildlife kind of in and around so I'm really glad that we decided just to leave that there it's so pretty and another thing I've done is just kind of plan out the little pathway that I'm going to make so this pathway will continue behind you there there's a whole area uh, that needs cultivation as well so I'm going to have my kind of walkway here um, and then on the your right hand side my left hand side I will have lots of wood chippings all the way along here I really do want to go out and buy some wood chippings to just put down here and make it look really lovely straight away but I'm not going to be doing that I am just going to be making homemade wood chips so it might not get put down straight away or be completed this year but it does mean that I can use my own wood chips from my own garden which is not going to cost anything and every time you spend any money in the garden obviously it does cost something but then you do have like an environmental impact from that so if I can just make my own wood chip from the garden that will be amazing and um, so I'm really pleased with this area I have also bought some other fruit bushes um, and I'll show you those now and I can tell you where they're going to be going one thing that I've never ever grown in any of my gardens, any of my allotments is raspberries and they're actually an item that we have quite a lot in the house. We buy them as frozen berries and have with porridge um, and my daughter absolutely loves them. They are so expensive. I think you're looking at like, you know, nearly three pounds upon it and you get about 10 raspberries in them and it's really bad you know we we buy frozen raspberries and they're probably sprayed you know who knows where they've been grown and you know it's just not really good one raspberry plant apparently can yield about one and a half kilograms of fruit so i have enough space in this garden that it is really time that i got myself organized and started growing some but because I didn't really have anywhere for them to go. I'd never really bought them before because it would be another thing like these black currants in pots for a couple of years that I'd be forgetting to water. And yeah, I didn't have them. So today, this morning, it was raining. We are meant to be having 10 days of rain and clouds and it was raining this morning. I was feeling a little bit sad. So I decided to pop down the garden center and pick up some raspberries. Amazingly, the sun has come out this afternoon though, so it's been the perfect weather. Everything's been watered this morning. We've got a nice sun this afternoon. So if we had 10 days of that, that would be amazing. Um, but yes, let's move on to the raspberries. So the first one I picked up was a Maling Promise. This is a summer fruiting one, so or an early fruiting one. There's two types. You've got um, early and autumn um, fruiting. Autumn and 
early are treated differently. One you chop to the ground and one you don't chop to the ground at the end of the growing season. I can't remember which, so I will need to look into that. But this is an early one called um, Maling Promise. And then I have two autumn fruiting ones here. And we've got uh, Heritage and we have Ottawa. So I decided to go for three different varieties so I could then take cuttings from each and then make more for free rather than having three of the same. All I'll be doing with these ones is growing the autumn ones together and the summer ones together as well. So I can kind of just make sure that if they mix up, I know which ones are which. Um, but also I've got some more fruit that I am going to be also planting up here. So I have um, two rhubarb crowns no idea where these came from they were just uh, little bits of crown that were um, hacked off something from probably down at the allotment maybe a couple of years ago they were left as just crowns on the ground and then i potted them up with some compost earlier this year and they are now growing so uh, no idea what variety they are but they will be growing just here in and amongst the wild garlic um, so they will probably go in later on this week, early next week. Um, and I've also got a, a chuckleberry. Um, this is an organic chuckleberry. My sister bought me this um, as a birthday present, again, probably two years ago. Um, and it's organic one, came from Garden Organic, I believe. That was actually gonna go alongside these um, black currants, but we ran out of space. So, not 100% sure where that is going to go, um, but it will be kind of in this area. And then while you're here, I will show you um, this lovely thing. So sorry, you're probably a little bit too close to the camera here, but I have a lovely, um, oh, what's it called? Cherry plum. So again, it is a poor little plant that has been <laughs> left to grow in a pot and neglected somewhat it's quite dry in here actually and this until about half an hour ago was actually down on my patio getting baked in the sun uh, the reason i went for this cherry plum was because it is a perfect hedging plant so i thought this would be great to use along the edging of um kind of my my living hedge that is going to be growing in my forest garden so i bought it and then put it in a pot and yeah it's been completely neglected ever since and it's dry as a bone so i need to make sure i water that in a bit um i have decided i think that i am going to grow a load more of these i was reading up about a cherry plum as a hedging plant and it is really good it's also something that is beneficial to wildlife it looks pretty because it grows loads of pretty flowers in march it didn't actually flower this year so probably not very happy in the pot um but I have seen, I can pick up, I think it is 12 more of these for 20 pounds. Um, so I am tempted actually to pick up another 12 so I can get started with that hedge this year. Uh, but I haven't fully decided yet. I might just try and take some cuttings from this and then get some more, not 100% sure, but this though is naturally gonna be planted along the hedge there. I'm actually gonna plant it just behind you on that fence because this area now is in full sunlight and we're not what time is it it is 126 so it means we get the midday sun here um, because the sun actually is much higher above all of the trees over there so this area is always going to get really nice afternoon sun so i think we're going to dig a hole and plant it along this fence here so again i can kind of just um put lovely edible flowers and plants along all of the fences behind everyone's gardens and then if we yeah either get some more that i can plant in there or take cuttings this autumn and then get some free plants um so yeah that is the plants i haven't put in yet um but let's turn the camera around and show you where i have also cultivated and here are my four raised beds. These are the metal raised beds that I had in place where my polytunnel is now. So just so you know exactly where we are, we've got the polytunnel here and we have the new um, kind of cultivated fruit bush area with the big bed there. So here, honestly, maybe two months ago, you couldn't even get into this area. So I don't know if you remember, um, me and Kath coppiced a hazel here 
Um, and then honestly, this entire area was just full of brambles. Honestly, you couldn't even get into it. At that stage, I didn't even know that there was kind of this yucky metal fence attached to these trees, nothing. You could not even get in this area. So um, we just kind of continued working our way this way and then realized, you know, there was no grass here. It was all kind of forest flory and it would be a really good area to put these raised beds. Um, down at the front, you can probably just see there, I've got a couple of grow bags. Now there is an area there that I can probably get another raised bed and the bed at the top here is actually semi-shade. So it doesn't get, um, it probably doesn't get five hours of sun, um, but the others definitely will. And we did wonder if we were gonna put this one down at the front there, but I thought, no, potatoes are gonna grow really well here and it's a perfect use of that space because if we don't put a raised bed there, you know, what are we gonna be putting there? Now, behind me, we've got an ash and a cherry tree. They are eventually gonna be taken down. So at the moment, these don't get full sunlight, but as soon as they are taken down, maybe in a year or two, they will get more sunlight every day. And the sun's just gone behind the clouds now. Um, but again, it's half past one in the afternoon and these are getting full sun and that's dappled, um, shade i've already started or made a start on filling them um and i will show you that now a little bit closer up the sun's gone in and it's just started spitting so hopefully uh, we can get this video finished before it starts hammering down again um this is yeah the first raised bed that i started filling and i don't know if it was this year or last year that I decided that I'm going to really, if I can, not buy in compost anymore. I've always been peat free for as long as I can remember now. And over the last five years, the industry has really pushed now to be peat free and more people are aware of it. And we had lockdown where loads of people got into gardening. So because of that, there was you know, we had compost shortages and it was really hard to get hold of peat free and the continuity and the quality has just not been there because the industry is trying to change and it's trying to adapt to getting that compost really quickly. And yeah, it's been really hit or miss um, the quality of compost. And I know a lot of people are thinking the same, but also they are using compost that comes from the councils and um, those have been picked up curbside from people's houses and lots of different people use pesticides in their gardens um, they use weed killers and things like that and as a result over the years when i have spent money on compost i've not had great results whether it has been because of um, those weed killers um, and things like that and there's so many weed killers out there now that we just don't know you know what chemicals are in there and how long they're going to last in the soil i have decided that i am not going to be buying in compost and i don't want to spend the money on it to be honest so i now am only going to be making my own compost if i can and with this bed here what i have done is just put a one ton bag i've got one ton bags all over the garden full of bramble cuttings okay that um i just have left in situ where they got cut down so i have filled this raised bed with one of those um ton bags of bramble cuttings which are completely dead so i don't need to worry that they're going to grow back um and then i've put a layer over the top of um grass clippings so this grass clippings is from one mow of the woodland my back garden and my front garden so for this bed I'm just going to continue to fill this up with organic matter just like I did alongside um, the polytunnel there and whether I can grow in it this year or not I'm not really going to worry too much about that I'm just going to build the soil myself I have picked up a couple of grow bags so I might pick up a couple more so that as this is rotting down I can maybe just put a grow bag in here and see how things grow with the amount of sunlight in this area I'm not sure um, but I'm really lucky I live near a beach so I can pick up um lots of seaweed and just slowly build this up over this year i would rather know what i've got and not grow in it this year than spend a load of money you know bring up 65 steps from where i park my car all the way up here um you know and just be able to know that this is organic my own and what is in here so i'll be doing that along um, all of these beds so hopefully i've got ton bags all over the garden so I'll definitely be able to fill the rest of these up with brambles 
and yeah just build it up slowly i've got wormeries as well so i can just add worm castings to this and just go from there so there you go that is um what this area looks like at the moment i am honestly so pleased with it i'd spent so long over the winter just destroying everything and taking everything apart that i just really had to get something done that you know would look good and that i could actually grow in um all around this area though i do have um wood chip pathways this is all wood chip that was homemade and i actually put this all down before i worked on that area so unfortunately <laughs> i've got to make a load more wood chip on that lovely cultivated soil before it explodes with weeds um, but anyway that is enough of this area i will show you now what the forest garden looks like as we walk down to the forest garden now, I just let you get your bearings. So on um, my right hand side, your left hand side, um, behind there, there's a trampoline and then you've got the new raised beds and the polytunnel. On your right hand side, my left hand side, this is where I've got the coppice trees. Um, this gets so much light and is so beautiful. So whether or not we will make um, some other beds here to put some fruit bushes or fruit trees, I'm not sure. Um, but what we have decided is everything on this side will be kind of metal raised beds, um, polytunnels and things like that and everything on this side will be completely organic so this is my woodland here this is not going to be cleared or get anything kind of trashed at all um so if we put any fruit trees in here or any um, fruit bushes anything like that it will be edged with logs and you know trunks rather than anything metal and i think that's really important that we kind of differentiate between this is kind of the woodland area and this will be slowly cleared for um food production and stuff like that also, this is where we've got all those abandoned ton bags. So I can definitely get rid of those. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, another couple of layers on that raised bed and the rest of them. Hopefully we can get rid of it. Anyway, let's move on now up to my woodland garden. Yeah, not looking great. So here you are. This is what the forest garden looks like at the moment. It's not looking like I thought it was going to do at this time of year. In my head, past Erica thought in December time that once this was all cleared, we would then um, have it completely beautiful garden straight away. OK, but it's not. Uh, the main reason being is that there's two springs here that need to be dug out. That is a lot of work that needs to be done. I have all of this oak tree that needs to be moved before we can really kind of look at the area and decide what we're going to do. And we need to move all of these logs before we can sort the spring out. We have cleared this area underneath the plastic and we just put this plastic down to begin with, just so that nothing else would grow back. However, I think there are a few things that have grown underneath, like some saplings that were cut off and are now growing. I am not going to worry too much about this area because although it gets full sun and it's going to be a great allotment area, I've got those four raised beds now that I can slowly work on and we can kind of march our way this way um, until we get to this area. One thing that we will be doing is getting in the hedging plants along here because that hedging can establish and grow over um, the rest of this year, early next year. There is a, a tree shrubby thing here. Um, no idea what it is actually that is, we've pruned back and is obviously growing as well. So if I get more of those cherry plums, um, I've got hazel cuttings that will hopefully establish. I've got some oak trees that um, do actually work as hedging plants. So they're all growing now that hopefully we can kind of work on this area. Um, one thing though I had been thinking was that there's loads of nettles that grow along here um, but where we've cleared it I've got things like forget-me-not, I've got daisies, all of this massive area of nettles. I did think that I was going to clear it. Having stinging nettles in the garden is really beneficial. You can eat them but I'm not going to eat them um, but they are really beneficial so I think that I actually might plant into that and then as the hedging gets a bit bigger it will probably suppress some of the um you know some of the stinging nettles anyway so i think i'm going to do that 
if you think that's a really bad idea let me know um but yeah this is what the area looks like at the moment but anyway thank you so much for watching this video if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos i really hope that you have enjoyed watching it and please hit that subscribe button ring the bell so you're notified of all of my latest videos as ever youtube have some videos up now on the screen that they think you like so go ahead and watch those and i'll catch up with you in the next episode bye